Yeah, it, uh, first few years in Nashville, they call me the luckiest man in show business. Because um, usually it takes four or five years, or maybe ten years, to get to a point where you get a you get a cut out there. But I guess it was all good timing, meeting the right people at the right time. And um, <clears throat> let me see that list. There. <laughs> I'm not going to show it to you. Oh please, please! <laughs> can't you see that? Come on. No, I actually can't. I can't either. Oh boy, this is terrible. Okay, I know what I'm going to do. <laughs> After that song right there, I, I, I started writing. I was very lucky to uh, to actually write for the biggest uh, uh, quartets in the in the country music. The yes. first one was the Oak Ridge Boys, and then I got to write for some boys from Fort Payne, Alabama. And I was sitting in my office one day, and I came up with this idea, and I wrote it down. And I had a little melody to it. And I, I went next door to my buddy Ronnie Rogers, who Ronnie had written Dixieland Delight and a bunch more hits for those guys. And I said, hey, Ronnie, what do you think of this idea? And I played him this idea, and he said, oh, my God, I love that. So in about two hours, we, we write this song. And uh, the, the next day, we're supposed to get together with a bass player, Teddy Gentry. And uh, so Teddy was about, he's two hours late getting to the writing session. And he comes in, he says, boys, I'm so sorry I'm late. And he says, my that old white Mercedes of mine, I'm going to sell that thing. I hate it, man. It's broken down on me so many times. He says, aside from that, he said, what have you boys been working on? Let me hear it. So we're playing the song. He's like, oh, my God. He's jumping up and down, jumping up and down and saying, that is going to be our next single. And Ronnie and I are looking at each other like, uh, <laughs> we don't think so because this song is too country for Alabama. Well, it just turns out that they were looking for a song just like that because of the radio guys had said maybe the Alabama was not real country. And Randy Owen was looking for the song to make him realize that he was a country singing fool. So anyway, <clears throat> Teddy tells a story to this day. He says, you know something? He says, if that damn... Mercedes of mine hadn't broken down. I'd be a third rider on that song. <laughs> so anyway, it goes like this here. It's the biggest song they ever had. That's what they told me. Four weeks at number one back in 19-something. And uh, anyway, you can sing along with me. In the corner of my mind Stands a jukebox And it's playing on my feet Thank you. Them only one by one they take me back to the days when you were mine and i can't stop this jukebox in my mind well i don't need no quarters i don't need any dimes you fill it up forever when you said goodbye you know of old melodies they were meant to ease the pain but the kind that's playing on my mind are driving me insane and in the corner of my mind stands a jukebox and it's playing all my favorite memories one by one they take me back to the days when you were mine and i can't stop this jukebox in my mind oh. Song my song, they take me back to the days when you were mine, and I can't stop this juice. I can't stop this juice. Box no wacky stop. Well, the jukebox finally stopped, y'all. 
And when the jukebox stops, you know, what do you do? Put another quarter in. That's the part I like the best. <laughs> in my mind. Awesome. <laughs> Just send more money. It's all right. <laughs> I think it's more like a dollar now, isn't it? <laughs> I think it is. It's got to be. I like that.